found is that there are no answers. America is in the midst of a great education debate, and the concerns on a national level are now being reflected tonight here in North Texas. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Margulies, sitting in for Tracy Rowlett. School is on again in Fort Worth. 65,000 students headed back to the classroom today. They're facing some tough new rules drawn up by state lawmakers for school-age children. Those rules toughen attendance requirements, and they set minimum scores for passing. And school officials say the new rules are firm and will be enforced. During 1983, 60,000 children were victims of child abuse in Texas. Attorney General Jim Maddox now says he has a plan to help abused youngsters. Maddox and the Texas PTA today suggested the state set up a children's trust fund that would provide both care and counseling. He says money could be raised by making it more expensive to get a marriage license. A PTA spokesperson says 15 states currently fund child abuse programs by increasing such fees. And another flying first premiered today in California. 1,500 dignitaries watched the B-1B bomber roll off the assembly line. The B-1B is a hallmark of President Reagan's defense program. The president wants to buy 100 of these supersonic planes. The projected cost more than $28 billion. But the bomber has had a controversial history with mixed support from Congress. And now safety is also a question. Another prototype of the plane, the B-1A, was grounded today until Air Force officials are assured the plane is safe. A B-1A crashed last week, killing the test pilot. Rioting apparently sparked by rent increases has now taken at least 29 lives in South Africa. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets into the crowds of youth gangs who have been burning and looting government buildings. Black businessmen who collaborate with the white minority regime are also being targeted by the rioters. Today, the trouble spread from seven black townships near Johannesburg to other areas of South Africa. This is the bloodiest rioting in that country since 1976. Thank you, Dave. Well, in Dallas County, the commissioners made history and a lot of friends today when they cut taxes by 14 percent. This is not the first tax cut ever. It is, however, the first time the lower tax rate hasn't been wiped out by higher property appraisals. The big controversy in county government now is how to spend the money. The commissioners want to build a new criminal courthouse, but as Gary Reeves reports, they can't decide how big it should be. Here is. If you wanted to run for office today with today's weather, Troy, this is the time to announce. So we'll give you a few seconds. The trouble is today would have been the day, but by election time, we're going to have so many bad days. No, actually, this is a great... About 45 feet. That's pretty big. Quite a smile. Yes. And that's our news for this Tuesday night. Thanks for joining us. Troy says it will be sunny and 90 degrees. Entertainment tonight is next. Good night. Good night. This is News 8, the Texas Vote with Midge Hill and David Margulies. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. The races in Dallas could decide whether homeowners or business interest will dominate the city council. Political analysts say campaign mudslinging discourages issue-oriented voters from going to the polls, and today very few people were voting. One of the most bitter campaigns involves the race for incumbent Paul Fielding's District 2 seat in the Oaklawn area. Channel 8's Jack Kendrick and Jim Fry are covering that race. Earlier this year, opponents were saying Oak Cliff Councilman Jim Hart had talked himself out of office with controversial statements about crime and minorities. But Hart is proving to be a strong candidate, and despite his reputation for being outspoken, there is less mudslinging in the District 1 race than in any other. Tonight, Channel 8's Jane Peterson is standing by live at Hart headquarters. And in area suburbs, there are five city council seats to be filled in runoffs in Arlington, place three, place one in Garland, and in Lancaster, place three is up for grabs. Nearly 4,000 children were treated to a party by a major Dallas corporation today. Handicapped and disadvantaged youngsters from 30 nonprofit groups were entertained at the fourth annual Kids Carnival. With the help of Frito-Lay company volunteers, the children custom designed cookies and they spun art paintings. There were outdoor activities as well and lots of big smiles despite the somewhat dreary weather. I didn't think it was that dreary. It was okay. Well, as they so watch him. Now, coming up next, the Mavericks finished game two of that five-game playoff series with Portland. We'll find out. For a little while, it looked like the Mavs were going to win. It was. It was a now, just a reminder, the polls are open until 7 tonight. We'll begin getting results shortly after that, and we'll keep you posted throughout the evening. And then we'll be along at 10 with a full wrap-up of election results, plus all the day's news, sports, and weather. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night. With David Margulies. Jim Littleton with weather.
followed by Dale Hansen Sports Special. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Five alarms have been sounded in Fort Worth tonight. The downtown Hilton Hotel was on fire. At least 400 guests have been evacuated. Tonight, the hotel's general manager says a fire broke out about 40 minutes ago in a hospitality suite on the 11th floor of the North Tower. He says the fire is under control and firemen are now making sure everyone was in fact evacuated safely. Except for smoke inhalation, there have been no injuries reported so far. Channel White has several crews on the scene and we hope to hear from them soon with more on this story. Now, in other news tonight, Soviet leaders are preparing to assess Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko's peace talks with President Reagan. Secretary of State George Shultz said today the U.S. offered no major concession in an effort to get the discussions off of dead center. Still, there is hope the talks will warm chilly relations between Washington and Moscow. ABC's Walter Rogers has more from the Russian capital. Texas' new prison director says new equipment could help control the unprecedented violence in the state's prisons. Fifteen inmates have been murdered this year, more than 280 injured in stabbings and fights. And guards have also been victims of stabbings. Tonight, Channel 8's Brad Watson looks at some ideas to bring a measure of peace to Texas prisons. A lot of people spend Sunday morning sleeping late, but not if they're balloon enthusiasts. They were out in full force this morning for the finale of Plano's fifth annual balloon festival. Bad weather had postponed most of the activities yesterday, so the races were combined today. Sixty hot air balloons took part in the competition. It can be expensive just to get off the ground. Just inflating the giant spheres runs from two to four thousand dollars. Top winners, though, like Steve Jones of Belton and Ron Gardner of Memphis, Tennessee, race for the love of the sport. And there's always a bit of showmanship, too. Pilot Pat Cannon of Louisville delighted the thousand spectators by almost taking a dive in the drink. Festival organizers say Cannon was never really in any danger of taking a swim. Well, it sure doesn't look that way. <laughs> Looks like fun. It sure does. When I take Tonight, a story about fundraising you might call Cutting for Liberty. Channel 8's Jack Kendrick explains. As we told you at the beginning of the newscast, a five-alarm fire broke out tonight in Fort Worth at the downtown Hilton Hotel. The fire is out. Channel 8's Dave Cassidy is on the scene with a live report. Dave? <laughs> Dave, thank you. Of course, there'll be more on that story tomorrow on Daybreak and at 5, 6, and 10. For now, that wraps up the news. Thank you very much for staying up late with us tonight. Don't forget the Jim's weather outlook for tomorrow is more sunshine, high of 78. Sounds nice. Right now, Dale is standing by with all of today's sports, including live interviews with football players from SMU and TCU. That's all next, so please don't go away.